Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca, and today I will be giving you a few recommendations for the Newt's Magical Readathon. <laughs> So if you are unfamiliar with the Newt's, it is the second stage of the Magical Readathon, which is a series of readathons that is hosted and created by G over at Book Roast based on the examinations that the students at Hogwarts take. The two main stages of the Magical Readathon are one month long each. The first stage is the Owls, which takes place in April every year, and the second stage is the Newt's, which takes place in August. I will put a link to G's Newt's announcement video in the description box below, so that if you were unaware of this readathon, which I'm sure you're not at this stage because it is a pretty popular one, then you can head over there and find out everything you need to know to participate this time around. Essentially, I am here today because G asked a bunch of different booktubers and book bloggers from various Hogwarts houses to bring a recommendations video that is based on a few select subjects from the Hogwarts curriculum. So the subjects for House Slytherin are Arithmancy, History of Magic and Potions, and I will be giving you one recommendation per prompt for the newts, which will be 10 book recommendations overall because one of the prompts does have an alternative path you can take if you don't want to do that particular prompt. Some of these prompts are pretty vague and you could pretty much do whatever you like with them but I would just be recommending a few of the books that I really enjoyed that do fulfill those prompts. So thank you very much G for inviting me to be a part of this particular round of recommendations. I know that all that has been said, let us get straight into those recommendations starting off with Arithmancy. So the first prompt for Arithmancy is to read a book that ends on an even numbered page and for that I would like to recommend to you You by Caroline Kepners. This is an adult thriller that puts you in the mind of Joe who works at a bookstore. One day a girl walks into that bookstore and Joe quickly becomes infatuated with her and does begin to stalk her. I think that this book is particularly good for a readathon because it is very fast paced and compelling. I could not put this down and one of the aspects of this that I do particularly like is that Caroline Kepners makes you feel for Joe. It's told in second person perspective so you are inside his head for the entire time that you are reading this book. So you follow him around in his day-to-day -day life. You follow all of his thought processes while he is stalking this girl and let me tell you some of the things that Joe says and does are actually pretty damn relatable even though you would not expect that and I just really like the way that Caroline Kepner's twisted this narrative so instead of feeling for the victim in this situation you are more likely to feel for the stalker. The second prompt for arithmetic is to read a standalone and for that I would like to recommend One Day by David Nichols. This is an adult contemporary story that follows two people who meet on the evening of the university graduation. They start to get to know each other better and are on the cusp of beginning a romantic altercation when they are rudely interrupted and they do exchange numbers and decide to try to stay friends. This book follows these two people on the same day for the next 20 to 25 years I think it is. I haven't read this one in a while so I can't say whether it stands up to the test of time but this is my absolute favourite adult contemporary. I love the relationship between these two people. There are ups and there are downs in this. There are times when they are spending that one day together. There are times when they go their separate ways, there are times when they are the best of friends and times when they hate each other and it's definitely a roller coaster of emotions. This has a very bittersweet ending and it absolutely destroyed me so if you are a fan of those stories that are absolutely going to rip your heart out then this may be one for you. The third prompt for arithmancy is to read a book that is longer than 350 pages and I could have gone many different directions with this because I do read a lot of fantasy but I have decided to try and keep these books to books that I think will be good for readathons as much as I can. So I picked Orange Volume 1 by Ichigo Takano. This is a contemporary manga that has science fiction elements and this follows a girl who receives a letter from her future self saying that if she does not change some things then a boy who is transferring into her class will shortly die. Now this is the first bind up in the collection so there is another volume that, that is equal to this in size. I think this is around 500 pages so you are well within the parameter for the prompt but it will absolutely fly by because it is a manga and shouldn't take you long to read. This series obviously does have a sad undercurrent because it is about this girl trying to save the life of her friend. However, there are many uplifting moments in here. This is a story about friendship, about supporting people through tough times. There is also a little bit of romance in here. There is a love triangle that is so perfect.
perfect. Like, I don't mind a love triangle, but this is the best way that a love triangle could possibly work, and I absolutely loved it. If you are a fan of friendship groups and you like to be real deep in your feels when you're reading a book, then you may enjoy this one. While I absolutely love this, I will give a trigger warning for self-harm and suicide, and some of the messages in this book aren't exactly great, because it does imply that the friends and family of people who are suffering mentally are responsible for keeping that person alive and improving their mental health, which is not a position that anybody should be put into, but everything else about this story I absolutely adored. Next we're moving on to History of Magic, and the first prompt for this is extremely vague, it is just to read a fantasy. Obviously you could go anywhere with this prompt, but one fantasy that I do think is great for a readathon would be An Enchantment of Ravens, wow the glare on that, <laughs> An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This is extremely short for a fantasy novel, which makes it perfect for a readathon, and this follows a girl in a world where humans and fairies are mostly separate. However, fairies do come to the humans quite regularly, because fairies cannot create anything, they can't cook, they can't bake, they can't paint or sculpt or anything, so they do often come to humans to be able to provide these items for them. Our main character is a particularly skilled painter, and she is commissioned to paint the portrait of the Autumn Prince. However, she makes the grave mistake of painting human sorrow into his eyes, and he is really not happy about this, because amongst his people it is seen as a sign of weakness, so he comes to collect her and take her away to the fairy court, where she is supposed to say that it was a mistake and she didn't mean to do it. So this is very much a fantasy romance, a lot of people didn't really like this book, but I think if you go into it aware of the fact that it is a fantasy romance novel, then you stand a very good chance of enjoying it. I did really like the romance in this book, I liked the banter between the two characters, and I also really liked the world and the whimsy of this. When our main character reaches the fairy world, it is very whimsical, and these fairies are very much tricksters. I also particularly liked how you have this whimsical nature with a slightly creepy and sinister undercurrent, because while the fairies can seem nice and friendly and jolly on their exterior, they are also prone to cruelty and taking pranks a little bit too far. So if you are looking for a short fantasy for this readathon, then this may be the one for you. The next challenge is to read a book that includes a map, and for that I would like to recommend Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is one of my favourite book series, I am eagerly awaiting Dark Dawn. This is an adult fantasy that follows Mia Corver, whose father was murdered and whose mother was taken away from her when she was a very young child, and she is taken in by this old man who owns a shop, and he prepares her to make the journey to a school of assassins, where she will be able to train to be an assassin and eventually exact revenge for what happened to her parents. This is definitely adult, there's a lot of sex and swearing and gore and bloodthirstiness in this, but I absolutely love Jay Kristoff's writing style and his humour, and this is definitely one of my favourite books. While this one is not ideal for a readathon because it is a little bit chunkier, if you are looking to intersperse your TBR with some chunkier books and some faster readathon reads, then you may want to pick this up, especially as the final book in the series will be released in September, so if you are planning on starting this series at any point, now would be an excellent time. And not only does Nevernight contain a great story, it also has not one, but two absolutely stunning maps. For the final prompt for History of Magic, you have two options. You can either reread a favourite or read a classic. So I have provided a recommendation for both of these options. Obviously, rereading a favourite would be very subjective to you, but a series that is a lot of people's favourite, as well as one of my personal favourite series, is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Ma. This is a young adult fantasy romance that follows a girl who accidentally kills a wolf in the woods when she is hunting for her family in winter, and this giant beast comes along and drags her away to the fairy land to take her life in place of the life of the fairy wolf that she took. The thing that I like about this series and about Sarah J Maas in general is that I think that she not only writes great characters and great romances, but there is also a great fantasy plotline in here as well. A lot of times you'll either find that a fantasy story will have an excellent plot, but you won't love the characters or there won't be any romance in there, or you'll find that the romance takes over the story and the plot is very secondary. And isn't that great in comparison to the romance. I think Sarah does an absolutely excellent job of balancing those two. I have reread this series myself at least twice, I think I've read this book three times, so if you are due a reread of the series, now would be a great time. And if you would like to go the other route and to read a classic, one of my favourite personal classics is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Now I have to admit I haven't read a lot of classics and this is one of the first ones that I ever read, but this is a tortured romance kind of story about a girl 
who is the daughter of a lord or somebody with quite a bit of money and a ratty orphan stable boy type person who comes to live with them. This is very angsty and it's a lot of will they won't they and they have this passion for each other but they never act on it and then a lot of the time they love each other but then two minutes later they hate each other. So it is that kind of story but this is one of my favourite classics ever and it isn't too long by classic standards so it may be a good one for a readathon if you do want to go with the classic route. And then onto the recommendations for potions. The first prompt for potions is Polyjuice Potion, read one of your friend's favourite books. And my very best friend Ryan's favourite book is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I thought that this was his favourite but I thought he might have a new one since it has been around eight years since he read this but apparently no this is still his favourite book. So this is very popular and I'm sure you are aware of it but if you are not this is a young adult contemporary story that follows Hazel Grace and Augustus who meet at a support group for children with cancer. I think Gus is in remission but Hazel does still have cancer and they essentially strike up a friendship. It is kind of about stepping outside of your comfort zone. Hazel is very restricted because of the type of cancer that she has but Gus kind of teaches her that she could die at any moment and while the way that she is living is relatively safe it is not particularly exciting and it is not the way that you would want to spend your last days if they do turn out to be her last days ever. This one is a weepy one. I have read this one and I did not cry. I did enjoy it. I do enjoy John Green books and as it's a young adult contemporary it is quite a quick read for a readathon. The second prompt for potions is house ingredient to read a book with your Hogwarts house colour on the cover of the book. I am clearly a Slytherin so my house colour is green. Wow I am. I'm really green today. And obviously I own a range of very colourful books but I feel like the obvious choice for this one would be The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid because this is like the most Slytherin looking book that I have ever seen. So this is also a very popular book but it is also a very very good book and it follows an aging starlet called Evelyn Hugo who has invited a no-name journalist to collect her memoirs. Now this journalist is in a very enviable position because people have been after the truth from Evelyn Hugo for absolutely years and nobody knows why she has selected this specific journalist but she would not give her story to anybody else. The way that this book is told is that it goes through Evelyn's life following the narrative of each of the seven husbands that she had throughout her life and the main question on everybody's lips is which of these seven husbands was the love of Evelyn Hugo's life. This is a very emotional one and the thing that I really liked about this is that Taylor Jenkins Reid writes Evelyn Hugo as though she is a real actress. By the time you have finished this you will be convinced that she is a golden age Hollywood starlet like Marilyn Monroe and you will want to google her but Evelyn Hugo sadly does not exist. There is also LGBTQ plus rep in here and I really liked how this brought the golden age of cinema to life. It did feel very realistic and like I said it is a little bit of an emotional one. And then the last prompt for potions is to read a book with a prologue. Now a lot of fantasy books do have prologues but I decided to go a different route on this in case anybody taking part does not particularly read a lot of fantasies and I picked The Furies by Katie Lowe. Now this is an art copy so the finished copy does look a little bit different but this is an adult thriller that follows a girl who has had a rough couple of years, her father and her sister died in a car accident. She's coming up to the end of school and she does plan to get a job but her mother does convince her to apply to go to this exclusive all girls private school because they got a large settlement from the payout of the accident so they can afford for our main character Violet to have a better education than she normally would have. Now Violet doesn't really want to go but as soon as she gets to the school ground she absolutely falls in love with it. It is a very gothic style campus and she also finds out that it was the site for quite a few witch trials back in the 1600s. There is also a murder mystery through here this book is told from the main character in the future looking back on this one year that she spent at this school with an enigmatic group of girls and the story starts out where a 16 year old girl has been found dead on a swing. She's like perfectly preserved, it doesn't look like there's any foul play at all and nobody ever figured out how she died and then the actual meat of the book does narrate the one year that leads up to the death of this girl. I absolutely love this, it is a little bit of a chunky one but I think I read this in around two days. I just absolutely could not put it down. I did not know where the story was going and I was completely enraptured. There are also elements of witchcraft in this book and the way that I like to describe it is that it is like 
the craft but British. There are a few trigger warnings for this book including animal sacrifice and sexual assault but this is a book that I just picked up on a whim and I didn't expect it to love it as much as I did and no this is one of my favourite books of the year. So those are all of my Slytherin recommendations for the nudes. Please let me know if you are participating in the nudes, what career path you are going for and if you found any of these recommendations helpful. Please do also remember that the link to G's announcement video will be in the description box and in the description box of her video she has absolutely everything that you would want to know about the magical readathon, the nudes, she has a career guide and everything. G has put so much work into this readathon and it is definitely my favourite readathon to participate in. The first rounds were last year and I participated in all of those and I intend to do the same this year as well. But that's about it from me today so please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head to my description box you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish body butter and candle website, the Instagram for that and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today guys. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go And nobody knows With guns in under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no